feel hands on mine. You're touching my hand? It's come from the guy. It was bad that I gave him a hug. And you're very touchy right now. This is Avrami here, and welcome back to To the Edge of the Sky. We are here being lectured by everybody, and finally the the beautiful angel Dr. Sadiq is here to lighten up the mood a bit. Dr. Park. Dr. Sadiq inclines her head slightly, but I notice her smile wavers when she glances at Dr. Park. Dr. Park, I'm sure you noticed, but I sent a message that Seven was to be sent down to my office as soon as she was well enough. According to the data from Seven's biometrics, Seven woke up several minutes ago and she's not even dressed. But it seems she is experiencing some stress. Is there a problem here or can I take my patient? Dr. Park snorts and drops her tablet on my bed, turning away from both me and Four. I have no use for Operative Seven at present. Do what you, do what you will. All right then, Seven. Could you get? Can could, could you go get dressed? I'll wait here. Um, yeah, but where are my clothes? Unexpectedly, Four drops a bag on the bed. There, your mission ones are damaged, so these were brought from your room. Oh, thanks. Who grabbed them? For some reason, I feel a little shy to try to ask where he got them from, or to even meet Four's eyes right now. I slide off the bed and grab the bag. Doctor City nods and smiles at me encouragingly. I'll wait here for you. Go on. Dr. Park, who had walked away to a computer, glances over at Four. She opens her mouth as if she's going to say something bad the mo at that moment. Four turns and starts to walk out of the room. <laughs> I feel like I want to say something as I watch his retreating back, but no words come to mind. At this point, I don't even know how to feel, or what to feel. Uh, happy that I'm alive? Frustrated that I messed up? Confusion at everything? But I am glad Dr. Sadiq is here. I'm st still in days I walk off to the bathroom and get dressed. After Dr. Sadiq's session, exhausted, I went to bed and drop off to sleep. Without a thought. Only to wake up in the middle of the night, played with thoughts and the crazy events of the day. Restless and unable to sleep, I decided to come up to the garden to see the stars. I look so beautiful. The stars calm, calm some of my internal turmoil, but I feel lost. And most of all, I feel lonely. Unconsciously, my mind floats to him. Four? Zero? Shoot, the premiums of four or zero? Obviously four, but I will save it because I know some of you guys don't want to see zero. Let's go with let, let's let's go with zero first so I can show you guys zero, but I'm gonna eventually go back to four. Four is gonna be my main choice, and we're gonna stick with four. Unexpectedly my mind drives, uh, drifts to zero whom I haven't seen in a while. I feel like he'd understand how I was feeling right now somehow. I wonder if he's ever messed up a mission. All of the other guys seem so experienced, confident in themselves. But Zero still seems uncertain. I think he'd get it. It'd be nice to talk to someone who did. I find myself missing the relaxed feeling Zero gives me. The way I can say anything and know he'll listen without getting upset or judging me. But it's past midnight and I'm sure he's asleep by now. The feeling of wanting to talk to him doesn't go away though. Dr. Sadiq's session helped, but there's still too much I just don't know how to feel about. The harsh reaction Ross had, Dr. Park's coldness, making a mistake or being stabbed, the fact that Four killed a man because of me. I can feel anxiety bubbling up again. I quickly think back to what Dr. Sadiq told me to calm myself. Are you feeling alright? Are you in any pain? I unconsciously touch my stomach, where it's only a little tender. It's hard to believe I was stabbed today. Faze's medical facilities are incredible. Uh, honestly, I can't tell. I feel exhausted and a bit drowsy. The drugs probably haven't worn off yet. Be sure to let someone know if you feel any pain or have any issues, okay? Okay, thanks. You had a rough time of it on your mission. How do you feel? A rough time of it? Huh, <laughs> sure. I screwed up, got stabbed, and four. Four... The man is dead, right? Dr. Sadiq stares evenly back at me and gives a slight nod. I look down, feeling stunned. Four killed him. He was his target and I tried to help, but he killed him because of me. Are you alright? I- No, not really. It's okay not to be alright. There are- These are heavy things that happened. Dr. Sadiq looks down briefly, mumbling to herself about checking in on Four soon. It didn't just happen, though. I caused it. Four's mission fell because of me. Mission failures are normal and operators don't succeed on them all the time. You shouldn't blame yourself and no one else should. Especially not Dr. Park. You're more than what you, you're, you're you're more than what you can do. Being an operative, I'm starting to wonder if I really belong here. 
what Dr. Park said comes back to the, the forefront of my mind. From my perspective, you have one job. Perform as efficiently as possible. But I'm not efficient at all. I let emotions get the better of me. Because I'm human. I did my best and it wasn't good enough. Because I'm human. Just what am I doing all this for? I don't know the question, answer to that. Am I not supposed to ask these questions? I sign and look up at the sky beyond the dome. Join the view, Michiko? Is that my brother? Uh, I guess the choice for zero did nothing because he's asleep. Go to four. Four. My stomach... I'm assuming I can't even see four if my brother contacts me. My stomach knots in anxiety just thinking about him. I messed everything up. He must hate me. I try so... <laughs> don't say that. I got so sad when she said that. Or when I read that out loud. I tried so hard but I didn't listen to him and ruined his mission. Still he came to my rescue or killed a man for me. I don't know what to think, but I can't help but wish I could see him right now. I want to apologize and make sure he's alright. A part of me undeniably wants to feel his protective presence too. But it's past midnight and I'm sure he's asleep by now. Yep. I guess it's just who you love more. Maybe there's an affection, hidden affection bar around here. Is that a female voice? Oh, it's a female voice, not my brother. You know that gives me a heart attack, but I try to remain calm. Who is this? You can call me a messenger raven of Kairos, or something like that. The woman speaks with an accent, perhaps British or Scottish, I can't quite tell. Too bad I don't know how to do accents, so sorry guys. Kairos? You must be quite surprised to find out your brother is in Kairos. So he really is? Yes, he is now Kairos' very own devil. Devil? My stomach clenches and I swallow hard. I guess there was still hope I'd held out that it wasn't true, but... Would you like to see him for a chat? Huh? Would I like to? My heart, uncaring of allegiances, leaps at the opportunity to really see Nish again. And in my mind, I know I don't. I do want to ask him about this. I need to hear about this. Why he's doing this from his own mouth? But what if it? But what if it's a trap? But the meeting would be somewhere neutral and full of civilians. And even if it was a trap, what other choice do you have? The woman chuckles. Not to worry, your brother would like you alive and unharmed in any way. But you better not inform FaZe, because the meeting would be off in an instant. If I decide to meet Nish, where should I go? Just wait for a call in a, in a half hour and be ready to leave for the city immediately. What, right now? The call ends before I can say another word. My mind races, trying to process what just happened. What should I do? You're going to meet with Kairos? Hello? <laughs> Who's <laughs> this? This time a male voice cuts off my train of thought. It's my lover. <laughs> Don't hit me with this music. Would it have been zero if I kept going? I wonder. I turn to see four standing there. Four? Did you hear my conversation just then? Oh no, this probably sounds really bad. I'm not a spy or anything like that. Or merely stares at me wordlessly and I find words tumbling out in a rush. I know I know that things probably look real bad for me right now. I messed up the mission and and Kairos is calling me, but I swear I didn't ask for them to. I grab my head with both hands and squeeze my eyes shut tight. It just came out of nowhere asking if I wanted to meet Nish. And of course I want to see my brother. It's been so many years. Especially right now of all times when I'm so unsure. I feel like I just don't know what to do or I feel hands on mine. You're touching my hand? It's come from the guy. It was bad that I gave him a hug. And you're very touchy right now. I feel hands on mine and I slowly open my eyes to see four standing right in front of me. I don't know what I'm doing anymore. I don't, I don't know what she was talking about anymore. As his icy gray eyes pierce mine, I trail off in surprise. He gently pulls my hand, hands away from my head, one hand reaching up to stroke my hair. For a mo few moments, we merely stare at each other and I feel myself calming down. But then Ford drops my hand, pulling his, his away from my hair. He steps back as if he just realized what he was doing. Four? You looked like you were starting to panic. I didn't know what else to do, sorry. No, it's fine, I just... You're right, I was freaking out. I've never felt so lost as I do right now. I almost... Oh, always know what to do, what direction to go in, but it's like everything has gone wrong since I came to Olympia, and I don't know if I'm making the right choices at all. I'm suddenly second-guessing everything I do, and I just... I'm glad you're here for. About the mission. It was my mistake. 
You shouldn't blame yourself for it. I'm the one with more experience here. I should have known better. I should have controlled myself better. Seeing you for size. I want to do something for you after. Poor trails off, but I get what he means. After all the ex extensive lectures we got, it makes me so happy that he was even there with me at the time. And that he wanted to do more. <laughs> just having someone who cares and listens to everything at times like this. Please, I just don't know what to do. Was it a wrong decision to join phase? Maybe I'm just holding you guys back. Why do I say these things to make myself sad? I don't think I'm good enough to do this. For only response with silence. The sign turned to the stars instead, but they're as silent as he is. I'm not a very talkative person. <laughs> I, I know it's fine, but I'll try for you. Don't try for me. It's like the sweetest thing ever. <laughs> I glance at Poor in surprise. Poor, what you're feeling is not anything unusual. Failure. I'm haunted by it day after day. Every time I look in the mirror, I see it. Faze expects a lot out of us, so even the smallest mistakes feels much bigger. He pauses. Everything we do here is heavier than most get to know. Most operatives don't get to know why they're doing what they're doing, but they have to learn to live with what they do, even when they don't fully know why they're doing something. That kind of thing weighs on you, and it only gets heavier with each mistake you make. The weight we carry follows us around everywhere. It can start to feel like we can't do anything right, and we start doubting ourselves. I nod in agreement. Yeah, that's exactly how I feel right now. It's hard living like this. Despite what happened, I still think you're very capable. And I'm sorry I couldn't get to you in time. It's fine. You still saved me. Poor. You're in Phantom Alpha because you belong here. His voice sounds firm and full of conviction. He doesn't doubt that I do belong here. With him. With them. Even after what happened, he believes in me. But don't forget that you're only human. Whatever the higher-ups might make you feel sometimes. Never forget that. Mistakes are not the end of everything. You're allowed to not know what to do sometimes. That's why you're not alone. We're in this together. The entire time Force spoke, my emotions kept building, threatening to overflow. Now at this last sentence, I'm overwhelmed by them and throw my arms around him without thinking. I hear Four inhale sharply as he stiffens in my arms. After a moment of hesitation, he awkwardly unwraps his arms around me, returning the hug. I love hugs. This is the best. He doesn't say anything, but I feel his big hand stroking, gently stroking my back. I'm once again surprised by this man, but he feels so warm and smells so nice. Especially when I think about whatever punishments we have coming tomorrow. I don't want to let go. I smile a little. I think I'd know, I'd know this, but somehow, it's nice to hear it. The responsibility of it all can be too much for just one person. That's why you should rely on us. And remember to breathe. Sit back and take some time to breathe. And try to remember what you're doing this for. What if I'm not sure? What am I doing this for? <laughs> for not slowly. There's nothing wrong with not being sure. But I'm guessing you have some reason you started this. And some reason that keeps you, keeps you going when the darkness closes in. If you don't have it yet, I'm sure you'll find it. I look down, mulling over for Fora's words. She's blushing, my guy. Do you see? My face is blushing. Thank you. Finally, reluctantly, I pull away from Fora. You know, you're very wise. Thank you. I'll try to find that reason then. My mind flashes to Nish in that call. I'm not sure what I should do about Nish though. Go then. Huh? You want to? You want to, right? Don't let the opportunity slip by. Living with regrets and what ifs won't be good for you. Hmm. You're right. That's how I've been trying to live before too. I should try to not forget it from now on. What I want. I want to see Nish. I want to talk to him and find out why he joined Kairos. So do it. But I won't stop you and I don't plan on telling anyone. I'm stunned up for his kindness and I almost wonder if I can really trust what he says. No, I know that I can. But even if I do, it could still be a trap. I'll come with you. Huh? <laughs> How? They know who you are. <laughs> you would do that? It could be dangerous. I can't ask you to do that. I don't want you to get hurt again. You've already done so much for me. I can handle it. We're teammates, so you should know that by now. But for this, I'm coming with you as a friend. 
I hate that friend word, but it's better than teammate, so... Thank you. Friend? Friend? Once again, it's shocking to silence. I can't say anything for a while. You're an unpredictable guy, you know that? You don't say. When are we going? <laughs> when are we going? I don't know, man. They didn't call me yet. With no room left for argument, I find myself sighing with a smile. You free right now? We're at a club? About half an hour ago, I got another call with the location of the meeting. We're at a club. We're always partying around here. <laughs> But anyway, this is where we're gonna end today's episode off. Oh my god, four is so sweet. <sighs> They're- Sorry, I hit the mic. They're making it very difficult for you to stay loyal to one operative. They're all so stinking lovely. They're all freaking lovely. But anyway, thank you guys for watching today's episode. Stay beautiful, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Okay.